there. Thank you so much for joining me. You are tuning in to Tips and Tricks in Private Practice. My name is Francisca Mix and I'm the owner and CEO of Francisca Consulting and Counseling. Before I get started, if you've got any kind of comments or questions, we'll stick them in that comment area and make sure to subscribe or like this channel if you hope which I'm hopeful you find this really beneficial as you are on your journey in private practice. So I get asked so many times and so many questions about how do I do this thing called private practice? Well, today's talk is skip rookie mistakes in private practice, and you are going to be actually surprised with what they are. So most often than not, individuals have this vision and they're like oh i want to go in business i want to run my own private practice whatever it might be but what we end up doing is that we meet this new project this new endeavor with what we know and there's nothing wrong with that actually right nothing wrong with going oh okay i'm a trained therapist so i'm going to just start my practice so what do we do we think about all the rules and the responsibilities of a therapist, don't we? And then we start listing out all of our to-dos. I have to get my consent form, a disclosure statement, I need the HIPAA form, maybe an ROI. We just automatically go to the forms, don't we? Because that's what we know, right? I need a, I need a scheduler. How am I going to schedule people? I need to get a credit card. How am I going to bill? Or am I going to be insured or paneled for insurance? This is where we tend to start. And I'm here to tell you that the rookie mistake number one is that we are thinking too small. We are thinking too small. And it is no fault of our own. There is no fault in this. It's just that we don't know what we don't know. So I'm so glad that you're tuning in today because we're going to skip these rookie mistakes and you get to do that too. So thinking small is the first rookie mistake that we all fall into. And guess who did? I did too. You know, I, before launching my own company, I really, I helped others start theirs as well prior to me launching my own. So I knew actually what I needed to do. I, you know, got my tax ID number. I got all my forms, da, 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 da. But then it came to a point where I was like, oh, I mean, who's going to reconcile my business bank accounts? Do I have to hire an accountant? I guess I do. Oh, who's going to manage my taxes? Oh, is that, was that me? I mean, I hit a wall and was so going, whoa, there is way more to a private practice than just being a therapist. So that's what I'm talking about. Skip this mistake. You got to expand your mindset. You got to expand it to thinking like a business owner. Okay, a business owner. When you think of business owners, what are the things that come to mind? What are they responsible for? Write it down. What are they responsible for? Chances are it's way more than just being a therapist. So skip this mistake. I already mentioned accounting, tax preparation. I'm actually the interior designer. I am the business decision maker. I have to define and create my plans, the vision. I'm the visionary, the seat, you know, the chief visionary officer. I'm the chief executive officer. I'm the chief financial officer. Are you getting the drift? You are in the C-suite when you are the owner of a private practice. So you can see there's no fault to us because we didn't know any better, but you got to get into that mindset. You got to expand the mindset of a business owner. All right, folks, rookie mistake number two, forgetting the business blueprint. What am I talking about? You are going to understand when I say this. When we're therapists, we are actually required by law, not just because we work with insurance, required by law and the ethics of counseling that we create treatment plans for our clients. 
forgetting the business blueprint is as if you don't write a treatment plan for your business. Okay. So think of the business blueprint as the treatment plan for your business. Okay. So many times when I, when people come to me, I'm like, all right, let's talk about your business plan. And they're like, uh, I don't have one. It's like, no fault, no problem. We're going to actually start working on that because that is the foundation that all your thought and your dreams and ideas, it's a document that you get to really put all that in. And it truly does. It starts defining the identity of your private practice, okay? And it truly helps with marketing, with writing blogs, with learning how to set your fees and defining the services and the why you want to work with people and the why you don't want to work with other people. It truly provides this plan of action so that you can stay the course and you accomplish a lot more because it's identified. It's already thought. It's intentional versus, oh, right. Oops, I forgot. I guess I do need that now that I'm here. We don't want to be that way. We don't want to be the oops-a-daisy approach to running a business. You want to bring some intention to it. And so working on your business blueprint is a definite 100%. Not It's not just, yeah, maybe. It's Yeah, get to work if you haven't done that. That is rookie mistake number two. People really don't think of that. Again, we don't know what we don't know. These things have not been taught in your education, nor are they taught in your trauma-informed CEUs, right? So if you're interested in diving deeper, well, you can always reach out to me and I'd be more than happy to walk you through whatever you're looking for. So... Rookie mistake number three, when individuals start launching and they start, they make the decision, I'm going to do this now, which is wonderful, by the way. And if that's you, congratulations. But rookie mistake number three, we practice in isolation. We practice in isolation. You know, it's so interesting because I know, I, I am pretty confident that when you were a student what did you hear all the time two things probably don't practice in isolation and the second thing was trust the process right are you are you following me do you remember that time you remember that time it was like okay i know don't practice in isolation so why is it that when individuals decide i want to launch a private practice that they're going to do it all alone there is no need to isolate right? This is greater. It requires way more than just being a therapist. I am here. I promise you, I promise you that creating and running and growing a successful business, which to me, you know what that means? It means that there's work-life balance. It means that you're not constantly stressed. It means that you can rest easy. It means that you're confident in the decisions that you make. It means that you're earning the money that you want to make. It means that you're taking the vacation that you want to take when you want to take it, right? So believe it or not, there's a learning curve. And why do it alone? Now, someone might say, well, I could just go to the Facebook group. Of course you can, and you are going to the Facebook group, or I'm going to YouTube channel it, right? You're here right now. So that is wonderful. But why go about it alone? You know, in human growth and development, there's actually a phase that is so important to be seen, heard, and felt. Remember those toddler years of human growth and development? Hey, mom. Hey, dad. Look at me. Look at me. Look at me. The kid goes up a step. Hey, mom. Look at me. I went up a step. The kid goes down the slide. Wee! Look at me. I'm going down the slide. Right? There's actually a healthy phase of a little bit of look at me moments as we build and grow our identities as human beings. And I'm here to tell you folks, you are on the journey of growing and building a new professional identity. And it is one of the CEO or the business owner or entrepreneur, mompreneur, solopreneur. There's so many titles. I want you to think about the title that you want to give yourself. So believe it or not, practice in isolation when you're trying to grow and develop a new identity, 
is it really recommended? Talk to any psychologist, talk to any colleague of yours, and maybe go back to your notes in human growth and development, and you're going to go, you know, Francisca's got a good point here. So if you want to skip rookie mistakes, think a lot bigger than just being a therapist. You got to think of like a business owner. So you got to shift your mindset. Number two, you're going to put together your business blueprint or your business plan so that you can really highlight the path and it gives you a sense of direction. And lastly, don't do it all alone. There's no need. When you work with a consultant, when you're in a program of such, you will move the needle a lot faster. It will be more effective and most likely it's going to be done right the first time. So what do you say? Skip these mistakes, folks. Join my channel. I'm hoping you thought it was helpful. I'd love to hear from you. You can reach me at franciscacc.com. There's a link somewhere in this thing. And I'd love to hear from you. Until the next time, be well. Be well.